But one thing is sure, a great change of our psychological attitude is imminent. We need more psychology. We need more understanding of human nature because the only real danger that exists is man himself. Every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along that changes everything. Well, first of all, one's very fortunate if you get to work on just one of these in your career. Since the dawn of life on this planet, it has defined what we are, how we live and what we must do to exist. Everything we see, hear, taste, smell, touch, and even feel starts it as one. But something in the world has changed. Something that we created can now change us. Let me tell you our story. And it starts like every story does at the beginning of a journey, a journey to build an idea. Ray's group is a creative company. In fact, uh, innovation is probably baked into our DNA. It is something which we pride ourselves on and that comes through from the people that we hire and the people that we nurture in terms of building out their careers. Now, uh, we started off as a video production company initially and quickly we gained notoriety and we started working with some of the world's biggest companies. Just before the pandemic had hit, we decided to pivot the business into a direction where we were working with software. And because of that, it allowed us to go and experiment with many different things that are associated with software. And we quite frankly didn't know what we were doing. We learned on the job. It was also a very expensive experience. And one of the things that it did teach us was that we shouldn't fall in love with the things that we're making, but think instead of the practical problems that our customers have. We had to almost kind of go back to the drawing board and look back at the core of what it is that we do in order to survive. So we went back to doing video production and then we started to think again about what it is that we were trying to do initially with software. And it dawned on us, it gave us a realization that we could do anything, but we just have to apply ourselves in the right way, looking and addressing the things that practically mattered to people. And that's when we thought, yes, this is something that we can go for, something that's within our power to change the direction of where we were heading as a company. And that's when we had an idea. We are dealing with a lot of issues, especially post-pandemic. The coronavirus. The coronavirus. Coronavirus. China has identified the cause of the mysterious new virus. We have climate change. Global heating is accelerating. Flash droughts are likely to become increasingly common. Rise in the cost of living. Do you think the Bank of England's done a good job in controlling inflation? There are global pressures. Britain is having a particularly difficult time. Shoplifters and shoplifting incidents in the UK are on the rise. Mental health issues. Levels of economic inactivity among the long-term sick have risen by more than half a million since the pandemic. The majority of this increase is related to mental health problems. They say every 90 minutes someone commits suicide in the UK alone and then there's strikes, wars, the list goes on and on. It feels like there's nothing we can do. No matter what anyone says or does, there's no hope. But then something strike the world. No one doubts that AI will change the way we live, but the rise of ChatGPT and the other fast advancing systems has been accompanied these past months by a sharp increase in anxiety. Google says it's launching its own artificial intelligence powered chatbot to rival ChatGPT. Jeffrey Hinton told us the artificial intelligence he set in motion was an accident born of a failure. 
writers fearing that AI technology could take over script and story writing duties and cut them out of jobs. There are no programmers in five years. 41% of all code on GitHub right now is AI generated. ChatGPT can pass a GLUE level three programmer exam and it will run pretty much on a MacBook or a phone. And that's this year. Years. This year, right now. But like with any other tool, AI can be used for both good or evil. And so many people are talking about what it could do, yet not many people know how to do it. So welcome everybody to today's stand up. We need to think of ways that we're going to solve some of the big issues that are taking place around the world at the minute right now. And I know that seems like a really big ask, but if I had to kind of go around the table, what are your thoughts on how we can start to improve people's lives? Mm. Uh, because that's fundamentally what it's about. So if you guys want to just like run through some of the ideas that you've got. One of the biggest problems I see, at least in my opinion, is mostly the environmental and sustainability issues. People forget that how little uh, they, they think that they don't have much of an impact and they all go with that mindset of okay i if i do something it's not going to affect it that much but if everyone thought about that then we've all regressed we haven't meant to we didn't want to but we have regressed that is the main problem on people's minds right now is how am i gonna live not how is the planet gonna live deanna are people thinking about sustainability in ukraine um, I must admit that when the war started, like some focus is changed in our lives as well. So you have like priority, for example, to have food, to have some safety instead of to make some recycling. It, it, it is like it's like a base of life. And when you feel the safety, when you have this base, you start to thinking, oh, I want to care about the environment and other things and other people. So what would you guys say would be other big, like big issues that we can work on other than sustainability and environment? I think probably mental health. I've dealt with mental health issues before and I've went to, you know, my GP and they've said, go to this website and go sort yourself out basically. <laughs> and it's like, I'm dealing with all this stuff in my head at the moment. How am I meant to comprehend helping myself? I need to be guided in the right direction. People have been struggling to get appointments for this. Now, if, if I'm depressed now, I need help now. And I think that that is the problem that we have right now is that it, we don't have any immediate help with our problems. Have you got any thoughts on it anyway, and Gozi, like, you know, is, is mental health a, a thing in Guyana or? I think in Guyana is like no development. So person wouldn't know about certain things as it happens. Like need to do probably more awareness stuff. And instead of being like during one specific month or one specific day, spread it throughout a year. Because yeah. if you 11 months could do something in one month, how big of a issue would you think you'd be covering? If you're struggling to get by, that is gonna really put a strain on your mental health. Just having to do the, the most easiest things you take for granted. We do have that sort of counseling body available at university, but persons aren't aware that that exists. Um, I've had persons come up to me asking, oh, do we have a counselor at the university? Is there someone we can go to to talk to, you know, just to get someone's feedback? And they don't know, even though that person exists. It has to be so extreme for people to actually acknowledge it. And when they do, they acknowledge it in a very negative, taboo way. People aren't going out much. They aren't able to work, so they don't get the income. Oil prices have gone up just your everyday shopping's gone up, travel's gone up. It's just a big vicious cycle. First of all, there's a debt thing. People need to live. In order to live, they need to earn. They might not be earning enough. So then they turn to other avenues of earning. It might be theft. It might just be that they have to do without. You know, the living crisis at the moment is so, so bad. I actually saw a statistic and it was in 2008, 2009, 25,000 
people in the UK used a food bank. In 2022 to 2023, approximately 3 million people used a food bank. That just shows how bad things have got. People just try to survive, I guess, uh, who have like some business. Uh, we try to help each other as well. So if you have an opportunity to give someone a job, you will try to do this. But yeah, it's really difficult question for now because it's a big problem and government um, is not have an opportunity to help a lot with money to people. At no point in time has so much power been provided to so few people as to how we think and how we behave. And that's not healthy. We won't stand for it. We are all individuals. And that level of individuality is being gradually picked apart and removed. And that's not healthy for anybody. Yeah, let's make something that will actually change the world for the better. So ICDSS is the Imperial College Data Science Society, and we formed the community of data science enthusiasts at Imperial College. We consist of students from all age groups. We have undergraduates, we have master's students, we have PhD students. And the core theme is that we're all interested to understand more about data science, as well as understand more about what we can build with data science. So I met Clement two years ago when we first entered uni. Even though we're both from Singapore, I didn't know him before this. I only met him when we came to Imperial together. And yeah, we're really good friends now because we do the same cause and we see each other in school a lot. And then now we're like leading the society together. So we definitely work together quite closely. So I met Robert, uh, the CEO of Free Ash Group, in a mentoring program uh, a few months back, actually, before I started year three. And my impression was that uh, Robert is someone that has a really strong grounding in terms of values as well as business direction. So at, over at ICDSS, we kind of have the technical chops where we can build some really amazing stuff, but we felt that we kind of need some guidance in terms of business leadership uh, for people that actually understand the needs of users, the needs of customers, and so on. So I felt that um, Rias Group would be an excellent partner because they would able they would be able to provide us with the business guidance that we need to kind of create something more amazing than what would we be able to create ourselves. Clement told me about this project a few months back. He was in contact with Robert and then basically he was telling me that Rias Group wanted to build an AI related solution. Mm -hmm. And so when I first heard about it, I just thought it was a really cool opportunity and sounded like a really cool project. I think it's really exciting because data science has a wealth of experience and basically talent to offer because we have students from like basically different parts of uni. Like we have students who are in like studying natural science, whereas we have other students who are studying things like math and engineering. So it's really cool seeing everybody with different like experiences and knowledge come together. So my expectations is, I mean, first from a personal level, I kind of want to understand AI uh, at a much deeper level, uh, both in terms of the technology itself, as well as its implications on society. So we are looking to build something very cutting edge. And as part of that, I, as one of the leaders in the project, need to have a strong grounding in terms of the technical principles that undermine artificial intelligence. And I'm really feeling like this has really improved my understanding of the core technologies. And also, it kind of under, helps me understand how we can build AI uh, for the good of society and for the good of people. So in terms of the project, I think it's a really great opportunity for us to learn and to work together. And I'm really excited to get my hands dirty and to start working on the project because this is the first time I've ever done something like this, collaborating with an external company to build something of this scale. I think it's going to be really huge. And I'm sure along the way, there will be some challenges and, you know, things will get a bit messy because, I mean, after all, we're working on something that's really complicated and it's, we're still like in the really early stages. So there's still a lot to be fledged out and decided, but yeah, I'm excited to get into that process to 
basically get everybody who's on the team on board and like throwing out ideas and yeah i'm just looking forward to the whole process and to learning from it So I think for me, the focus of the meeting that we've got planned coming up with uh, Clement and the ICDSS team is to just try and find out a little bit more about what it is their motivations are. I'm not sure uh, exactly how we're going to be able to help them. Uh, I think it would potentially be something along the lines of using artificial intelligence and I, I, I love working with people who uh, try and push the boundaries of things which are technical, but also in a very creative way. So my thing with it is that when you have a bunch of people who are in an educational institution like Imperial and they offer you their services to work for free, what are you going to do, right? It makes perfect sense to make sure that we um, use the their ability and how and, and use the capability that they have to do something with it it's just a wasted opportunity if we don't and i want to make sure that we grab it as quickly as possible because i don't want them to go off somewhere else and i want to make sure that we put their talents to good use and something that's meaningful as well uh not just to us but also to them when I did the mentoring thing with the students from the IC uh, DSS, um, I knew I wasn't the most uh, scientifically or technical uh, person in the room. And to be honest, that's not what they got me there for. I felt that whatever I'd said landed and it had accomplished something as well with them uh, in terms of being able to inspire them enough so much so that they wanted to contact me. So I can't wait to really get started on, on making some AI with, with the team. So guys, we've got big things that we're talking about here, things like sustainability. I mean, that's, that's worldwide. Then we've got the mental health crisis and that's a humongous issue as well. So, um, and then we obviously got the world of work in terms of people finding jobs and, and, and working, um, earning enough. Honestly, I really don't know whether we're just biting off more than we could chew. Yeah. Mm. I don't know whether we can go after all of these big things. And is it just too much for us to handle? I don't know how we can solve everything. Like we, we need to really hone in on what we want to achieve and just yeah go for one thing and do it do, do it well. the best we can yeah i want to do all of it every <laughs> single one of them i don't know how that would be possible so maybe what it is that we do is that we make these two things one for mental health and one for the world of work but the sustainability thing is a byproduct that we will fund mm. to make sure that that happens as a result of what we're doing yeah yeah yeah. Maybe that's it. Let's see if we can do it. <laughs>